not something that I'm always used to. So to keep you guys entertained, I'm, I'm, I'm just flooding my uh, <clears throat> my YouTube channel here with content. And I figured I would do it with um, sort of like franchise, I guess, games. Uh, stuff that I kind of either grew up with or that you know I used to enjoy as a kid or still enjoy to this day. Um, that I can kind of talk to you guys about while I game. And Mad Max is definitely one of those um, that I grew up with as a kid and just have always enjoyed uh, watching. I actually went back and revisited the second and third one just recently. Um, Mad Max, Road Warrior, and then of course um, Beyond the Thunderdome. Right now I'm doing a little landmine searching with my dog which um, I guess is a nod to Mad Max um, Road Warrior gotta be very careful in which he had a dog um, in that film as well this game to me kind of looks like it takes place more in like the Fury Road, um, Thunderdome world. Watching uh, Road Warrior, there's a lot of green that still exists in that world. Plants and bushes. This seems to take place in the later years. But yeah, I've always enjoyed enjoyed George Miller's films. Um, the guy is a beast of a director. Real stunts, real vehicles. Everything's practical. Like the uh, I love in uh, the the fourth installment, Fury Road, that flamethrower guitar real. There's a real guy playing that. Being suspended. Here we go. There's one. The mask on. Oh no. Oh see. That's what I'm talking about. See I can't I can't play video games and talk at the same time you guys. It's just impossible for me here. You got it, buddy. Robert French here, back at you guys. As I'm also known as Red 5 French in the PlayStation universe. Coming at you with a little Mad Max action. Gonna look for gasoline. Landmines. Um, this is part of an ongoing series that I've been working on. It's kind of an accidental one. Uh, where I'm basically just talking while playing video games. Uh, not something that I'm really used to. I just recently set my PlayStation to my social media accounts. And I realized that it's really hard talking and playing video games at the same time. Like, I'm, I'm from a decade where you kind of shut up when you're playing video games, you know, concentrated. A lot of times, you know, your, your friends would punch you in the arm or leg if you were trying to, like, talk to them while they were jumping across a bridge or trying to do something crucial in a video game. Uh, so that's where I come from. And so this whole, like, talking, headset stuff is really new. Um, but I figure while I'm getting some practice in, I would just pick some games that I enjoy and that I also have, like, some connection to either in my childhood or... Hey, what's up, guys? Go ahead and beat these dudes up real quick. Oh! I'm dead. Psych! Oh. 
Oh no. I don't think so, mate. Oh, that dude's got like a claw hand. That looks like something similar from uh, his encounter in uh, Road Warrior. If you remember in Road Warrior, he um, where are these guys? I don't hear them. In Road Warrior, when he's in the semi truck, uh, a hand comes through the back of the. Um, well, come on, dude. I'm right here. A hand comes through the back of the the, the window and uh, sticks him in the shoulder. And it looks very similar to the same device. This world looks very similar to uh, the, the movies um, like Fury Road and Beyond the Thunderdome. Road Warrior had a lot of green still in it. I went back and rewatched some of those just recently. And there's still a lot of green and bush and stuff like that in that, um, in that film. I mentioned this yesterday too. I also feel like uh, Fury Road takes place in between the second and third installment of the franchise. Um, almost like a, a 2.5 film. What do you got? What do you got? There we go. Right, be careful. Thunderdome also had a very um, different feel to it. Like the opening of Thunderdome and the end of Road Warrior are just two very separate feelings and tones of film. Uh, I'm glad he went back and did Fury Road. I feel like really, if you really want to watch like a trilogy of the Road Warrior series, it's um, the original Mad Max, Road Warrior, and then of course um, Fury Road. And in fact, I learned that Mad Max Thunderdome wasn't even supposed to be a Mad Max film. It was just supposed to be a strange kind of like action movie uh, with like this, these lost children and then somebody came up with the idea, well what if it was Max who finds the children? So they went with that. But yeah, you could definitely tell like the Thunderdome was a very, uh... Very Hollywood version of the Mad Max films here. Come on, dog. Sniff these things out. I'm gonna roll over one of these things and blow up. It's gonna piss me off. Storms approaching, are you serious? Nope, they are not kidding. Okay, right here. 
Oh my god, he has got to be kidding me. See, I hate this part of the game because there's nothing you can do. You just got to sit here and wait it out. And uh, there have been times where I've gone to play this video game and I'm like, I'm only going to play for, oh no, I'm only going to play for a few minutes, you know? And uh, I wind up spending the whole game stuck in a freaking storm. Dog, get inside of the car. I mean, this is like a very beautiful game as well. Uh, I know it's an older game. There are a lot of newer games I could be playing right now uh, and, and YouTubing about, but I don't know. There's something about this apocalyptic wasteland. I feel like George Miller kind of inspired a lot of filmmakers uh, with this idea of uh, this world that no longer exists and what we would be reduced to, you know, just kind of looking for the essentials, fuel, water, food, the occasional companionship. And um, much like this sandstorm, the conditions of filming were not very um, pleasant for the crew and the, the cast when making the film. I love that the breeze is actually like clinging to the side of the ship there. That's amazing. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the scenes, you know, look like it's really hot in like, you know, the desert wasteland. Uh, I've, been, I've been told it was extremely cold uh, when shooting, like, Road Warrior. Um, and, you know, a lot of these guys are wearing jackets and pants that are missing, like, legs. And, oh, no. Did you see the NTM? NTM! Well, they say lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. So we'll put that theory in. right here on the side here. Everything seems to be blowing against that truck there. I could probably get inside of the ship, and I'm aware of that, and seek shelter inside of the ship, which probably would have been smarter before the storm kicked in. But even right there where that yellow strip is, I can probably climb up that and get inside the ship there uh, on top. But I don't want to leave my doggy. He's here. I'm here. We're just going to hang out. Yeah, the conditions were very harsh where they were filming. They would, like, drive to these really isolated areas. Um, I would imagine oftentimes if somebody got hurt, like, seeking medical attention would not be easy, considering some of the stunts these guys put together. Uh, I'm sure that was definitely an aspect of filmmaking that had to be considered. Uh, I also recently read that um, when talking about some of the things they had to consider in the film, like, you know, a lot of people question, um, like, Mel Gibson's uh, one arm. Oh, look at that blue spark. Oh. A lot of people question Mel Gibson's, like, one sleeve jacket. Um, or if they question, like, the, the, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I, can, I can hear it. I can hear it crackling. This is bad. This is so bad. I thought it was passing, but it looks like it's getting worse. Oh, my health is fading. I need to get shelter. Shoot. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice how bad. I thought that was just messing up my car. Ugh. 
I know, shut up, dog. Shut up, dog. Shut up. Oh. I'm drying out. Need water. Yeah, I do. I thought that was just damaging my vehicle. I had no idea that lightning was messing me up so freaking bad. Wow. Um, but anyway, so okay, well since the sandstorm's gone, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll zoom in here now because even the costume here it shows he's got this one arm jacket, you know, and I think a lot of people were like, Oh, what's up with this one arm jacket? If they even questioned it at all, I, I don't know. Um But the reason for this one arm jacket is there was uh I think like a motorcycle stunt or something in which Basically, the stunt was so dangerous, they needed to prepare Mel Gibson in advance in case he needed surgery for his arm. If that makes any sense. So, like, the stunt he's doing is so bad, they had to cut the sleeve off of the jacket ahead of time. So that way, if they had to do surgery or set the arm or something, they didn't have to, like fight with this sleeve of this leather jacket. And they took some crazy precautions. Um, I know one of the stunt drivers uh, I think it was like the last stunt in Road Warrior at the very end, the, the truck roll wasn't allowed to eat like 12 hours before the stunt in case he had to be rushed into surgery. Which, I mean, like, I feel like nowadays, if that was even a thing, like, you know, they wouldn't even do the stunt. Like, they would just CGI it or, you know, remote control or something. I don't know. I don't know how they would do it nowadays. Like, I, I just feel like if there was a stunt that was that dangerous, just be like, nah, we'll just figure it out some other way. They'll do it like a remote control car or remote, remote control truck or something. Where are these freaking landmines? I'm gonna run out of time on my video before I'm able to... This video is just gonna be Robert in the sandstorm and then driving in a dune buggy really slow. I remember Micro Machines did something with like Mad Max. I feel like Road Warrior kind of stuff where you could put these shells. Well, where is it, boy? You can't put these like shells over your micro machines. And they look like crazy Mad Max vehicles. And I think George Miller is crazy. Like he makes all these vehicles and then just like destroys them for the movie. You know? It's like, I'm going to make, like, 80 vehicles, custom vehicles for this film, and then I'm just going to destroy every single one of them. I thought I saw the same car that was used for, like, the Ghostbuster Echo 1 in one of his movies, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's the same car. And it might even be, like, the same kind of model or something, or maybe just, it was just an old classic car that was white with the big fins, and I was like, oh, that's a Ghostbuster car. Then I was like, nope. He destroyed everything he used. Dog, if you don't tell me where these freaking landmines are. I hate you, dog. Right. Right. Okay. Where? Oh my gosh, dog. Ticking me off. If I wind up rolling over one of these, I'm going to eat you. I was really sad. They, spoiler alert, they kill the dog off in Mad Max. Um, but, not in real life. The real dog in real life had an awesome story. Apparently... This dog was like basically obtained just to train for the movie, and he hated loud 
engines. He would actually like sometimes get so upset he would kind of like wet himself. Um, but after the filming of the the movie, one of the cameramen actually adopted him. Like they um they fitted this dog with special earplugs so he could be in the movie. Trained him just to kind of like ride along and be like a truck dog. And then after the film, one of the uh, the cameraman decided to adopt him. Where is it, boy? Where? Where? Are they? Sorry, this dog is ticking me off. I'm about to just leave his butt here in the desert. There's supposed to be three mines out here. I have found one. I'm going to roll over the other two. I wish there was a cameraman around here now to take you home. Where? Oh my gosh, good dog. Okay, alright. Yep, alright, be careful. We don't want to set it off. All right, we did it. We did it. Did it, boy. Knew we could. All right, now I hate to do this to you, but um, I need some water. I'm back now. And um, all right. Well, I was going to leave you here. It's a convoy route. I don't think so. All right, well, I think I'm going to head back this way and maybe try to locate some water down, along the way. Don't really want to engage anybody in this vehicle that I'm in right now because this is not the vehicle for fighting. Uh, 
Something I always thought too. I always thought the uh, the vehicle that Mad Max was known for driving was a Ford Mustang, and I think that's actually like a common misconception from what I understand. Uh, but it's not. It's actually an Australian vehicle known as the Ford Falcon, uh, which is very similar to like I think like like the '70s style um, Mustang that some of us are used to seeing. Um, even kind of reminds me of like the 5.0 a little bit and some of the aspects of like the front end. Uh, but yeah, I always thought it was a Ford Mustang. It's not a Ford Mustang, it's a Ford Falcon. And if anybody can remember the Micro Machine series that I'm just that I'm thinking about, um, please comment below and let me know what that is. Like I said, like these little Micro Machines where you could put a shell over the top of the car and... Uh, All of a sudden, make it into some kind of like road warrior, uh, some kind of road warrior car or something. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let me see. Let me do the garage real quick. All right. Got the extended mag. Definitely want to do that. Um, let's see, got some other stuff that are available. Anything else available? No. Looks like that was the only thing new there. All right. Change, please. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here. Um, I'm going to continue to cruise around the world of Mad Max a little bit. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Or tubing in. The little Dukes of Hazard. Alright, guys. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. I will catch you guys next time with some more video game action while I just blab, blab, blab. Um, do yourself a favor. Go catch Road Warrior and Beyond the Thunderdome. I think they're still available on Amazon Prime. If you have that, go check them out. Um, if you have a chance to play this game, definitely do it. Even if you're not a fan of the, um, the franchise, it's just a lot of fun to, um, you know, race around your vehicles, pick a fight with a few muties. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit, look out! Mm. Chum bucket coming! Oh wow. Oh no! Ugh. Come on, you assholes. Where are you? All right. Awesome. Well, again, if you're not a fan of this franchise and you just like driving around in crazy cars and beating the shit out of muties, well, then this is the game for you, ladies and gentlemen. Give me that scrap. Can I get that scrap? Why am I not on fire? That's hilarious. Um, don't forget again to follow me guys on um, YouTube or on YouTube on Twitter at RFA the third dot com. It's RFA the third. RFA the third dot com. See, that's what I'm talking about. I can't talk and play video games at the same time. Please follow me on Twitter at RFA the third. That's RFA the third three R D at Twitter for more clips and pictures and snippets of video game action. Uh, until next time, guys. This is Robert French and. Uh, Thanks for hanging out. Be careful out there. It's a desert.